Hey guys, what's up? Constantine here. So this week I wanted to parallel this video with our previous video. Um, we did a video about the top 10 experienced backpacker mistakes. So when we did this series, we wanted to do both of these parallels um, because we've been a beginner hiker. Been there, done that, made all the mistakes. So that being said, today is gonna be the top 10 beginning backpacking mistakes. And we have made every single one hundreds of times over so let's just get into it number one too much research too much preparation this day and age there's videos out there there is blogs out there there are books out there on almost any trail system there is just going to be thousands of different of point of views thousands of different experiences there's so much information and that's not to say don't check out what you're getting into but don't do too much research don't get yourself really stuck into the framework of like well i have to do this many miles each day i have to plan this food exactly to the t because you're going to be out on trail for months um plans don't always work out you're going to become more stressed having to stick to that plan than if you did some research got the feel for it knew what you were going into but let the trail dictate your decisions instead of making those decisions and dictating those decisions to trail. Number two, not gonna come as a surprise, pack weight or packing your fears. Um, when you're a beginner backpacker, you tend to throw stuff in your pack that you do not need. We have carried out five, four, six, I forget the number, but it was a lot of blocks of cheese um, in one section for four or five days. And when I say blocks of cheese, blocks, blocks of cheese. We've carried out journals that we haven't used. We've carried out little knickknacks that we've collected along the way. We've carried so much, so much useless stuff. We've carried extra clothing. We've carried extra rain gear. We've carried rain pants. We've carried a lot of stuff that we found we didn't use, but we still kept carrying it. Nalgene bottles, thick plastic. You'll figure out what works for you. You'll figure out, oh, I could actually switch this out for something. Oh, I don't need to be carrying this. So don't pack your gear fears and make sure that weight of your pack is if it's 40 pounds, 50 pounds when you're starting out and you feel like you need everything in that pack, that's awesome. Do that. It makes you comfortable in the beginning and then you will continue to find what you are looking for in that comfort level. So pack out 40, 50 pounds. Don't get too caught in ultralight, ultralight, ultralight. Ultralight is awesome. Ultralight is built for somebody to aggressively push miles on a trail. Usually there's people that also do ultralight and choose just to be inside that industry but don't get too caught up in going too light because you're going to be cutting stuff that might make your experience not as fulfilling as it could be so as a beginner backpacker put what put in your pack what makes you happy and quickly you'll find out you may not need it or you really love it keep it number three hiking other people's pace don't do it do not do it. Don't try to stick to somebody's pace so you can get to break spots together or have lunch together. If the pace comes naturally, that's beautiful. But if you try to increase your pace to try to stick with somebody that's going quicker than you, that will lead to issues in your body not properly finding the pace that is right for you. And we've had many times that when we were starting out hiking that we tried to stick with the pace. We remember this one time we were running down into Damascus with everybody that was like, above six feet, their stride was long, and we had to literally run. It looked like they were just walking fast, and by the time we got there, our muscles hurt a lot. Thank thankfully, it didn't lead to an injury, but yeah, don't don't try to stick with other people's pace. Um, do what's right for you, and you will end up finding other people that do the same pace, and that's not something to worry about, so stick to your pace, stick to your comfort. Number four, another big one, resupply mistakes slash mail drops. Um, if you love mail drops, do them, so you can go into town and pick up a mailbox from the post office and it already has all your prearranged food. But we have found that if you send out 20 mailboxes, most likely you'll be sick of what is in them. And not only that, you have to wait, wait on post office hours. You might feel time crunch sometimes. So if you wanna do resupply boxes, do it. But remember, that's gonna be your food almost the entirety of the trail if you choose to do it that way. So we recommend not doing them we've used them in key places so if there's only a post office in the town yeah do it but 
don't go overboard. So this also transitions into grocery stores. Um, we've tried to pack out a rotisserie chicken before. We've tried to eat all the rotisserie chicken and put it in our stomach so we could pack it out. A lot of mistakes. You're gonna learn along the way what food works best for you. Um, you're gonna make mistakes when you're resupplying. You're gonna get something that might not hydrate properly or you're gonna overpack completely on bars and get sick of bars. We no longer can eat peanut butter. And if you watch the GDT videos, we had a jar of peanut butter for our only food source for a big section. And we would take one spoonful a day and absolutely hate ourselves. So you're gonna make mistakes on resupply options. We can tell you not to buy raw meat and we can tell you the cheese that's gonna sweat too much, but it's mostly what you want and what you'll grow to be comfortable with. So resupply mistakes, it's gonna happen. Number five. The fifth mistake that beginner backpackers make is thinking too far ahead, not being in the moment. If you start out and especially on the AT, you're thinking Katahdin, 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 it's gonna pull you out of the moment and it's gonna be like, wow, I have 2000 miles to do. I'm gonna be on this trail for five months. My feet hurt really bad right now. My body aches. Am I gonna feel this weight for five more months, four more months, six more months, three more months, however long it's gonna take you if you start thinking way too far ahead, you're gonna start doing some mental arithmetic and be like, you know what? If I'm hurting this bad right now, I can't even imagine what it's gonna be a month down the line, a week down the line. So try to be in the moment and just think about that day. Think about, hey, you know what? I'm gonna do 30 miles today. If I have to do 30 miles every single day for the next multiple months, that's a future me problem. That's not my problem right now. I'm gonna focus on today. And then in those 30 miles, focus on, I'm gonna to get to the next water source. I'm gonna to get to the next break spot. I'm gonna to get to the next lunch spot. I can't wait to see a next view. So break that down into smaller chewable segments and get your mind really far out of the big picture because if you stay in the small picture, you're not only gonna feel better, but you're gonna enjoy it more. You're gonna see more. It's gonna be part of the journey instead of just wanting to get to the end. So stay in the moment don't think too far ahead nothing's gonna change that mountain's been there for thousands of years it's not going anywhere i don't think so number six not as big of a deal with these more well-known trails a at appalachian trail pct pacific crest trail cdt continental divide trail every single one of these has gut hooks which is an app for navigation so number six is navigation we want to just put it out there as a beginner backpacker it's okay to rely on gut hooks but don't rely on it too heavily especially in this day and age um smartphones are phones they are electronics they can break they can glitch out they can all of a sudden be lost on trail we've ran into every single one of these scenarios and if your only map source is your phone and you lost it it broke the maps got deleted somehow and you're standing on top of a mountain or in a valley and you're looking around you and you see no trail or even if you see a junction, you're not gonna know where you are. Um, so don't rely too heavily on gut hooks. Maybe look at some paper maps. They're lightweight. You don't have to carry all of them for the entire trail. You can carry the paper maps for the next section and send yourself maps ahead or print out some PDF maps. There's so many ways that you can rely on different forms of navigation and don't get too caught in having to know every single facet of a map because that's going to come with experience as well um, you can use gut hook use uh use any map system gaia use avenza because those are tools to be able to help you navigate easier but just remember don't rely on it too heavily because situations can arise that it pulls you out of it and you may be looking down the trail and not know where you are so be be wary number seven um this is probably only a beginner backpacker mistake and it's not a mistake made on trail it's a mistake made up here and this is before you start trail that it's an assumption it's all roses um we film our hikes we know many other people that film their hikes and we film our hikes even trying to show like the harder moments and all the hard parts but it is impossible to show the hard moments of each day when you're on a multiple month long journey. Um, we can only show you our wet feet so much. We can only show you how hungry and exclaim how hungry we are that entire time. We can only show you that we've been walking this dirt road for what it feels like loops and loops and loops all day. Um, 
And then especially when you get into the content that is edited, as we've been editing our videos, you will notice that every scene or almost every scene looks epically beautiful. It's really beautiful out there, but it is not all roses. What you're looking at on a screen translates into real life. It's more beauty out there, but you're also gonna have to put up with the day-to-day -day demands of being in the wilderness for multiple months on end. Your body is gonna start talking back to you. Your mind might start talking back to you. And just know it's not all roses. It's beautiful, but just like life, there's gonna be times that it is very difficult. And those difficulties tend to transition into being very uncomfortable. So be wary of that and make sure that, you know, it's not all roses, but it is still beautiful. Number eight, season selection slash trail selection. This kind of tied into number one about over planning. So when you are planning your hike, make sure you choose the right trail for you as well as the right season. Um, if you start the Arizona Trail in late May or early June, you're gonna have a bad time. <laughs> if you start the AT in January, you're gonna have a rough time. Maybe not a bad time, you might love winter hiking, but it's gonna be rougher than if you started two or three months later in March or April. Make sure you look at the weather windows for the areas you're traveling through and make sure you're cognizant of the seasons. Um, on the PCT, you're gonna have to get through the Sierras before it gets snow packed if you're going southbound. If you go in northbound, you gotta wait for that snow to melt a little bit so you can travel through there safely. So make sure the seasons coincide with what you're looking for out of that hike. And when it comes to the trail, make sure the trail is what you're looking for out of that hike. The Appalachian Trail is a completely different experience from the Pacific Crest Trail. The Pacific Crest Trail, completely different from the Continental Divide Trail. Continental Divide Trail, completely different than the Ice Age Trail. Every trail is different, so make sure you know what you're looking for. Number nine, worry of the unknown. Worry on, did you make the right gear choices? Worry on, what are you gonna do once you get off trail? Worry on, did you make the right life choices of getting on trail on the first point? Worry of ticks, worry of hypothermia, worry of dehydration. Worries will tend to spark in your mind when you're doing an activity, any activity, not just hiking, doing an activity that you're new to. So. All this stuff is not gonna come down raining on you all at once. You have dehydration at some points and you can taper it and learn from that and be prepared for it the next time. You might have a tick. That is scary. Ooh, I don't wanna talk about ticks, but don't worry about them, but be cognizant of them. Make sure that you're not getting Lyme disease. That's a whole nother story. But grizzly bears, bears don't want a lot to do with you. You might see a few. In our entire hiking career, we've seen, I don't know, 20? And a lot of the time they look at us, run away. A lot of these worries will figure themselves out while you're on trail, but don't get too caught up here. Kind of know that everything's gonna work out. Um, be aware and be safe, but don't worry too much about stuff that you can't control about, especially with wildlife. You can't control that. Don't worry about the weather. Be cognizant, be aware of it, make the pre necessary preparations for it, but, but don't worry when planning these hikes. So don't worry, have fun, be safe. That's the gist of it. 10, budgeting trouble. We had to touch on this because especially as a beginner backpacker, beginner long distance hiker, you're gonna learn. You're gonna learn on the first few hikes what is right for your budget and what choices to make when you're in town, when you're on trail, all the little stuff in between. So depending on what your budget is for when you go out on trail, maybe every single town stop, you don't stay in a hotel or a motel not a lot of hotels in these towns motels or maybe you split rooms five six people or maybe you don't eat out as much or maybe you look for the cheaper resupply depending on your budget the trail decisions will be almost made for you um, we've had buddies that really had to run down the trail because their budget was getting close to the end we've had buddies that sat back into their pace because they're like you know what I'm comfortable with what I'm doing. I'm really enjoying this experience. I'm gonna take my time and I'm gonna stay two nights in town. I'm gonna eat more there. I'm gonna do all this different stuff. So the budgeting, while very important, is something that will be tuned as you hike. Um, of course, if you wanna spend $200 in town, that's easy. If you wanna spend $50 in town, that's easy. If you wanna spend no money in town, that's hard. You gotta eat some food. But 
there's different levels to it and you need to do what's right for you and like we said you will grow into that budget and be able to find what works all right guys secret time secret number 11 time and i'm actually wearing the hat this time so 11 number 11 of beginner backpacking mistakes kind of brings all of this together it is expecting too much from your mind body all at once yeah this is a lot of information yeah it's gonna be a lot of miles yeah it's a lot of freedom yeah it's a lot of great stuff out there but you might be expecting so much from yourself just go with the flow don't expect all of this stuff to happen all at once don't expect yourself to crush 40 mile days don't expect yourself to know all the ins and outs of hiking we still don't know a lot of stuff about hiking we learn every single day don't expect to have all the right gear choices. Don't expect to have all beautiful days and all glorious thoughts. You're gonna have some down times. It's gonna hurt. There's gonna be painful moments. Some days you may not even feel like hiking, but the trail's in front of you. You have to hike. And those are small times, but don't expect your mind and body to just be gung-ho and ready to go all the time. Just like life, there is a learning curve. And as you climb that learning curve, your mind and body start to mesh more. It starts to not have to process as much because it already knows it and they start to intertwine and become easier and going with the flow of the trail. So don't expect to go out there and just know every little thing because impossible, impossible folks. Let the trail come to you and let yourself grow on the trail because that's what it's all about. Growth on trail and growth, growth off trail with who you are as a hiker, who you are as a person. Um, it's really a beautiful thing. So that's secret number 11. We really like these lists too. And um, yeah, if you guys like them, please let us know with a like, comment, or subscribe. Um, we love hearing from y'all. And if you really like this content, you can head on over to Patreon. It will show you all the behind the scenes and the stuff that goes into our off-trail time for on-trail. Because off-trail, on-trail, they're all one thing. And if you want to check out our gear, go on over to 11 Skies. And that is gear personally designed and created by us with 16,000 miles underneath our belt and being able to find the right hiking gear and the right choices to be able to last, be able to outlast any adventure. So as always guys, really appreciate having you all along. Cool, cool. Peace.